Good day everyone, I'm Pastor Ross Cochran and you can probably tell by my accent that I'm from Australia. I have loved playing around with Blender for many years now. I can remember Blender 2.28x last year on September 17th, 2023, Blender Nation featured an article and an add-on about the magic eye effect or auto stereograms. And on seeing this, I purchased the Magic Eye Maker add-on by Blue Nile 3D. And I was fascinated by the hidden images that I was able to make. Here's one. It got me thinking if there was another way to go about creating magic eye stereograms using Blender. And I wanted to see if you could create a realistic scene and still get the 3D effect. An auto stereogram that you didn't have to use special equipment like a stereoscope or special glasses to see, all on Blender. And I was able to do just that and surprisingly very simply and I even created some animated auto stereo videos. So some history. The guy who started all this was a man called Sir Charles Wheatstone in 1838. He invented an optical device that creates a three-dimensional effect by presenting a slightly different image to each eye. And then David Brewster came along and developed it further in the 1840s. And Brewster invented an improved stereoscope, which became the first portable 3D viewing device. He also invented the stereoscopic camera. They often featured scenes from around the world, and they remained popular until about the early 20th century and they actually laid the foundation for modern 3D imaging technologies. So how does it work? Well, when we look at an object, each of our eyes sees the same object or scene, but from a slightly different angle. So if I look at Suzanne through my left eye, I will see this. Through my right eye, I will see this. Left. Right. Your brain combines these two slightly different views into what we perceive as 3D depth. And this is known as stereopsis. When large Suzanne looks at a close-up of small Suzanne, the eyes slightly converge and focus directly on Suzanne's nose. And when you look into the distance, your focus separates and it becomes more parallel. It's as if you keep stretching out the letter V. The two lines of the V become more and more parallel while still remaining connected. When you look at a stereogram, instead of focusing on the actual image, your focus should be as if you are viewing something a little bit farther away behind the stereogram which means each eye focuses on a different image. So while keeping your gaze fixed beyond the image, you let your eyes relax and usually the image will lock in. Auto stereograms can be challenging to view for some people, so it might take a bit of practice to get the hang of it. I created an artwork on Blender with some bamboo some time ago, so I used it to create this realistic auto stereogram. Okay, let me show you now a simple way of creating an auto stereogram on Blender. I'll use Suzanne and work in Eevee. It will work for any object, however. First, delete the cube. Leave the camera and the point lamp. Now press Shift A, go to the mesh and choose the monkey, affectionately known as Suzanne. 
You can use any other object or objects that you like, but keep them close together because you'll need to be making an array and then rotating them. But for this tutorial, I'll use Suzanne. Suzanne looks a bit basic, so in the Properties panel, go to Modifiers and choose Add Modifier and then Subdivision Surface. And use your right-click button and choose Shade Smooth. Go to the Properties menu and select World. Go to Color and press the yellow dot. Select the sky texture from the menu. And below this, select Nishita. The sun elevation change to 90 degrees, which places the sun directly above. For the strength, 0.03. Go to the um, Viewpoint Shading Render button up top and give our scene some light. Move down to the Shader Editor. And choose a new material. On the principal BSDF and in the base color, give Suzanne a light brown color. Now go back to the viewport shading solid mode. The simplest way to create auto stereograms on Blender is using the edit tool called spin. Starting off with our Suzanne, go into edit mode. Press R and Z and 90 degrees for rotating around the axis. Then press G, X, minus 15. Go down to the spin tool. You'll notice a blue line appear with plus signs. Select the left plus sign and move it around to the other one. And you'll notice a spin menu comes up bottom left. For the angle, put in minus 180. And select the Use Duplicates box. Choose 15 steps. Go back to the object mode. In the view menu on the side, use camera to view. Now let's move the point light to the middle of this half circle and select the light and press numpad seven for a top view and then move this half circle. Select the light and press numpad seven for a top view and move it by pressing G to the cursor in the center. Choose one on the numpad to get the orthographic view and then Dell on the numpad to center it and then uh, choose Control, Alt and zero and using the camera to view, zoom in to about five or six Suzanne's. And now we have it. Now F12 to render. So I get the render at uh, eye level and don't tilt your head. Look through the image, not directly at it. Let your eyes adjust to the new image. Okay, well, I used a similar method and went on to create some Magic Eye Auto Stereo automated fish. I made the fish with an image from Night Cafe AI and animated it with the help of a great tutorial in YouTube by Cartesian Caramel called Procedural Fish Animation in Blender 3 Geometry Nodes. So thanks Cartesian Caramel, whoever you are, 
for that. I made this auto stereo fish animation for iPad size. This is a still from it to get you started. Well, let's go. Hey, thanks for watching. God bless.